The Accidental Superheroes by Quinn Baldwin. Illustrations by Kathanel Harris. Chapter 1. Catch the ball! The red kickball flew at Ben in the outfield. Sweat stung his eyes, and his heart pounded. It was his first day as a fourth grader at Westwood Elementary School, and he was getting ready to make the game-winning catch at recess. This is it, he thought. Don't mess up. I got it, I got it, he said. Only Ben didn't have it. The ball passed through his hands and hit him in the face. The other team laughed and scored the winning run. Ben's team stomped off the field. The team captain, Lonnie Butternut, pushed Ben. You're never playing with us again, new kid. Ben's cheeks burned, and he hung his head. I can make catches like that in my sleep, he thought. What happened? Ben's little sister, a second grader, Bree, wasn't having any better luck making friends at recess. She ran up to a group of girls sitting in the shade of a huge oak tree. Hi, anyone want to hunt for wild animals? The girls stared at her like she had cats crawling out of her ears. We could build a fort, Bree said, or run from an exploding volcano? What a weirdo, Nina Baconbits, a girl with sunburned red hair, said. Don't you want to do something? Sitting is boring. Bree looked up at the enormous tree. Let's climb this mountain. Nina and the other girls laughed at her. Ben felt sorry for his little sister, but it didn't stop her. She tied her hair back, grabbed a branch, and swung her legs into the tree. Soon, she was 30 feet off the ground. Every kid at recess stopped playing to watch her. She looked like a tiny speck against the blue sky. Then, her shorts got stuck on a branch, and Ben had to climb up to free her. The laughter swallowed them both, and now Bree's cheeks burned with embarrassment too. Climbing trees is dangerous, Mrs. Canola, a substitute teacher, said, and took them to the office. Chapter 2 The next morning, their mother fixed them omelets for breakfast. Bree wrinkled her nose and poked at her food. What's all this green stuff? We have the most amazing garden in our new backyard, their mom said. I can't believe I didn't notice it when we bought this house. I put some asparagus in your omelet. Asparagus, Ben said. Gross! You two didn't have a good first day because you didn't start with a good breakfast. Why'd we have to move, Ben said. I miss my baseball team. Bree looked out the window. I miss the mountains. No one here likes hiking or climbing or canoeing or anything, their mom smiled. She could smile during an earthquake. Just give this place a chance. She looked at her watch. You're going to be late. Take a bite and out the door you go. Bree and Ben walked the three blocks to school and finished chewing their asparagus omelet. It didn't taste bad, but they couldn't admit that to their mom. Suddenly, Bree's entire body glowed as bright as the world's most powerful flashlight. Ben covered his eyes. Stop shining that light in my eyes. What light? Bree gasped. Wait. Is all this light coming from me? I'm like a giant glow stick. Bree, turn yourself off or something. She giggled. How? Then she gasped again. Ew, what's on your arms and your legs and your face? Ben touched his cheeks and felt fur. Long, thick fur covered his entire body. He felt like he might throw up. What is happening? Bree laughed. You look like a dog. I can't go to school like this. You can't go to school like that. Something really weird is going on. Bree giggled. Really cool, you mean. Suddenly, Bree stopped glowing, and Ben's fur disappeared. Ben could breathe again. Come on, we've got to go. We'll figure this out later. Chapter 3. Your late children, Mrs. Canola said when they walked into school, we had a little problem with fur. Bree looked at her brother and laughed. Among other things, Mrs. Canola didn't smile. Instead, she led Bree to the principal's office. We don't lie in this school. Bree watched Ben go to class and felt very alone. Now sit, Mrs. Canola left to find the principal. Bree felt tears building in her eyes like storm clouds. She told the truth and she was being punished for it? Psst. A man wearing a doctor's coat whispered, I've got something that might make you feel better. He held out a bright pink toothbrush. Bree wiped her eyes. 
Thanks, but I already have a toothbrush. The man grinned. He had a kind face. Do you have a toothbrush that's also a marker, a flashlight, a whistle, a fork, and an emergency signal flare? Wow, it does all that? Bree took the toothbrush and clicked a button. A light beamed onto the wall. Cool, the man smiled. That toothbrush is also guaranteed to fight cavities, which this school is having a tough time with. Really? Bree glanced around like cavities might be hiding under her chair. He nodded, his happy face now sad. There are lots of cavities and no one knows why. That's why I'm here, he held out his hand. I'm Dr. Lardlow, a dentist. Bree shook his hand. Nice to meet you. Keep the toothbrush, he said. It's magic, too. Guaranteed to make your day better. He glanced into the hall. Look out. Mrs. Canola strode back into the room. Dr. Lardlow winked at Bree behind Mrs. Canola's back, and laughter bubbled into Bree's throat. Yet the kind dentist's words clouded her happiness. There are lots of cavities, and no one knows why. A shiver of fear ran up her spine. Chapter 4 Ben's heart raced when he entered the cafeteria for lunch. Who will I sit with? Lonnie Butternut narrowed his eyes at him and let out what sounded like a growl. Not him. Ben wanted to sit with the boys in their matching baseball jerseys, but they didn't offer him a seat. He sat down next to Bree. How was the principal's office? Horrible, Bree said. I don't think my day can get any worse. She opened her lunchbox and looked inside. I guess it just did. Did Mom give you a bunch of fruits and vegetables, too? Yeah. Ben scrunched his nose in disgust. He pulled out an ugly-looking carrot, twisted like a broken finger. But I'm starving. He took a bite. A moment later, there was a soft poof of air. Bree sniffed the air and covered her nose. Gross! Keep your voice down! Ben hissed. A smell, fouler than a garbage dump in the middle of July, filled the air. It was an accident. Now other kids were smelling it too and covering their noses. Lonnie stabbed his finger at Ben. You cut the cheese. What? Ben said, no, you passed gas. Lonnie said, he raised his voice. It was the new kid. Ben found every eye in the cafeteria looking at him. The next minute, those very eyes closed and every person in the cafeteria fell asleep. Their faces plopped into their mashed potatoes and gravy. Soon, they were all snoring. Even Mrs. Canola. What did you do? Bree asked, eyes wide. They were the only two people awake in the cafeteria. I don't know. He held up the carrot. You think it was this? A carrot? Are you serious? What else could it be? It happened right after I ate it. Bree snapped her fingers. I glowed and you grew fur right after we ate mom's asparagus. She looked at her apple and grinned. Let's test it. No, Ben said. But she'd already taken a big bite. Bree looked at the apple in shock. What is it? Are you okay? Ben felt near panic. This is the best apple I've ever tasted. She looked at him and giggled. The giggles turned into laughter, and soon tears streamed down her cheeks. Ben's face burned. What's so funny? Your face! She laughed harder. You look so scared, like I was going to grow wings or bark like a dog. Bree, now he was worried, very worried. What's coming out of your eyes? Tears, silly. Bree wiped her face. You made me laugh. Then she looked at her fingers. They were stained purple. My tears are purple? That apple did this. It's the food from our new garden. We need to get you to a doctor and all these people too. Hold on, Bree said and licked one of her purple tears. It tastes like grapes, yummy. Ben threw his hands in the air. Are you kidding? You're crying grape juice and drinking it? I'm going to cry some more. Maybe we'll get orange juice this time. But the tears turned clear, and everyone in the cafeteria woke up, mashed potatoes dripping off their faces. They were not happy with Ben or his sister. Ben grabbed Bree. Let's get out of here. Chapter 5. There's only one way to know for sure, Bree said. She stood in the garden behind their new house. Strawberries spilled onto tomatoes, 
apples and pears hung from trees. Fruits and vegetables were everywhere. I think this stuff gives us superpowers. She picked an orange and peeled it. Let's find out. Let's not, Ben said. What if something crazy happens? That's the fun part. Anyway, it only seems to last for a minute or so. Bree handed him half of the orange. Ready? No. Ben plopped it into his mouth and closed his eyes. Bree chewed her orange and waited for what exactly? Her heart raced. Maybe she'd be able to fly or be super strong or grow 50 feet tall. Anything could happen with the food from this garden. She looked at her brother. Well, he smiled. Nothing's happening. Good. I thought we were losing our minds. He threw his orange peel over the fence. It flew over the house, over the treetops, and kept going. Wow, you just threw that like a mile. Bree tossed him a rock. Try this. Ben cocked his arm back like he did on the pitcher's mound and launched it. The rock soared up and up and up until they couldn't see it anymore. He turned, grabbed Bree in a hug, and jumped up and down. Did you see that? I can make any baseball team now. I'm happy for you, she said. Now, stop hugging me. She pushed him back and frowned. Why was the food working for him and not me? Ouch, he said, and rubbed the spot where her hands touched his arms. You burned me. Your hands are hot. Sorry. She picked up a piece of trash that had blown into the yard. Can I light things on fire? But... Nothing happened to the paper. Maybe I need to eat more fruit. She grabbed another orange, but it exploded within seconds and splattered them both with juice. Try this, Ben said, and handed her a bottle of water. As soon as she touched it, the water inside boiled. Wow, I think you can microwave things with your hands. A second later, the boiling stopped. Ben picked up a rock and threw it. He couldn't get it over the fence this time. Bree scratched her head. So... Our powers only last a minute, and they're different every time, Ben said. Bree grabbed a handful of thick black dirt. There's something special about this garden, the soil or something. I ate some grapes Mom got at the store, and all I got was a juice stain on my shirt. A slow smile spread across Ben's face. You know what this means, right? What? I'm going to use this garden to become a sports star. With these new superpowers, I can do anything. Bree saw the wild look in her brother's eyes and suddenly felt very nervous. Wait, I don't think we should use them like that. We should help people. But Ben was grabbing all the vegetables he could carry. Chapter 6 Ben double-checked the laces on his shoes. His gym class was running the mile around the playground, and he had a secret weapon in his pocket to help him win. I have to prove to Lonnie Butternut and his friends they need me on their team. He pulled out a piece of broccoli. This will help me run fast, he thought. Broccoli? Lonnie said and scrunched his face up. Is that what gives you such bad gas, new kid? Just watch, Ben said and popped it in his mouth. He hopped on his feet. Come on, come on. The whistle sounded, and the class took off. Ben pumped his legs, but most of the class left him behind. Why isn't it working, he thought. I need to pee, someone said. These boogers taste good, another said. The new kid's cute, a girl said. Ben whipped his head around. Who said that? A girl with blonde pigtails raised her eyebrows at him. Said what? Nobody said anything. Her cheeks flushed red. Too bad he's weird, the girl said. Yet Ben was watching the girl's face as he heard those words. But her mouth wasn't moving. Ben's own mouth dropped open. I can hear people's thoughts? Lonnie ran by and thought, I'm beating the new kid, ha ha! Ben caught up to him. No, you're not. Lonnie's eyes widened in shock. That's right, Ben passed him. I know what you're thinking. Oh yeah, Lonnie said. What number am I thinking of? Ben stared at him but no number came to his mind. No, his power was gone. Six? Lonnie sneered at him. Nice try, new kid. Ten must have been the number Lonnie was thinking about because that's how many laps he beat Ben by. Chapter Seven 
Lightning flashed outside the classroom window. The lights flickered. Bree hated storms, but she smiled when Dr. Lardlow walked into her class. Hello, class, he said. Raise your hand if your teeth hurt. Bree was the only student not to raise her hand. Her teeth felt fine, but it bothered her that so many kids had cavities. I'm sorry to hear that, Dr. Lardlow handed each student a card. Tell your parents to call my office and make an appointment. He waved goodbye and left. The next moment, thunder boomed and the lights went out. It got very dark, very fast. Someone screamed. Another cried. A chair crashed to the floor. Maybe I can help, Bree thought. She had some strawberries in her lunchbox. If she ate one, perhaps it would give her the power to glow again. She chewed one quickly. Her skin tangled, but nothing happened. Bree's heart fell. Guess I can't be the hero today, she thought. Then the lights came back on. Everyone looked at her, some with fear, others with excitement, and they were giants. What's wrong, she said. Her words came out in a chirp. Uh-oh. Bree held up her hands. Instead of fingers, she had claws, furry claws. A bushy tail wagged behind her, her tail. I'm a squirrel, Nina Bacon Bits said. Don't let it get me. A boy fainted. The teacher jumped on a chair. A girl held a toothbrush out like a sword, but the hands reaching for her scared Bree the most. She leaped over desks, climbed up arms, and ran on the walls. She leaped with excitement. I can climb walls! But it was just a matter of time before someone caught her. The teacher opened a window, and Bree scrambled outside into the woods behind the school. The window slammed shut behind her. A second later, she was a normal, second-grade girl again. No more claws. No more tail. No more wall climbing. A stick broke nearby. Bree froze. Someone or something was in the woods with her. Chapter 8. Mrs. Friedbatter, the gym teacher, looked at her stopwatch and shook her head at Ben and the rest of the P.E. class. What happened today, class? Your mile times were much slower. A boy took a long drink from the water fountain and raised his hand. My tooth hurt every time my feet hit the ground. Let me see. Mrs. Friedbatter looked in the boy's mouth and gasped. Oh my, you have a lot of cavities. She looked in everyone else's mouths. All of you do. She stopped in front of Ben. Except for you. Her eyes narrowed. Why not? Ben's mouth went dry. I don't know. Mrs. Friedbatter stared at Ben a moment longer, as if he were responsible for all the tooth decay. She turned to the other students. Let's get all of you to the nurse. The class followed her down the hall, holding their cheeks with both hands. They glared at Ben. How was this his fault? Then Ben glanced outside, and something caught his eye in the woods. Someone was waving their arms frantically from behind a tree. Bree. He shook his head. Bree waved her arms harder. He sighed. Ben had one piece of broccoli left. Maybe it would give him super speed to run over there and see what she wanted, or better yet, give him invisibility so no one would see him sneak away from the class. He chewed the broccoli and watched his classmates' heads bobbing up and down in a line. Suddenly, their hair color changed from blonde and brown to white. What just happened? Ben concentrated on the boy in front of him. Suddenly, the kid's hair changed to neon red. I can change people's hair color? What kind of superpower was that? Hurry, young man, Mrs. Friedbatter said to him. Ben smiled. Maybe it's just the power I need. Coming. He looked at Mrs. Friedbatter's head and thought of pea soup. The next instant, her hair turned green and the class erupted in laughter. While they were distracted, Ben bolted out the door for the woods. He found Bree hiding behind a tree. What are you doing out here? Trying to solve a mystery, she whispered. Someone's in the woods. It's probably a deer. Yet goosebumps raced across his arms. Ben strained his eyes. The woods were dark and gloomy. Lightning flashed across the sky. Come on, Bree said. Let's check it out. I don't think that's a good idea. We should be in class. Ben peered into the forest. Doesn't it feel like someone is watching us? Bree gulped, but walked deeper into the shadows. I've got something to help us. She held up a peach. Don't, 
Bree took a bite before he could stop her. A moment later, she jumped over a creek and flew above the treetops. Bree! Ben raced after her and imagined the worst. What if that peach sent her to China or space? He forgot all about scary people in the woods and worried only about his little sister. When he stopped to catch his breath, Ben heard what sounded like crying. Bree? Bree? Only it wasn't crying. It was laughter. Up here, she said. Ben craned his neck and saw Bree perched at the top of a giant tree. He let out his breath. She was okay. I jumped up here, she said. The view is amazing. Well, climb down. We're going to get in trouble. While he waited, Ben looked around. He was surrounded by footprints and something very strange to see in August. Snow. Of course, it couldn't be snow, but the fine white powder scattered on the ground looked just like it. Ben got the feeling that someone was watching him again, and fear tickled his neck. That was when he saw the hole. Chapter 9. Bree dropped from the last branch and laughed. I'm beginning to like eating mom's fruits and vegetables. That felt like flying. Her brother was crouched beside a hole. Wow, you've been busy. I didn't dig this hole. It was a joke, silly. She knelt next to him. I thought maybe you ate something from the garden and your arms grew into shovels and you turned into this little tractor and shh, he said and looked around. Let's get out of here. These woods are creeping me out. Hold on. She peered into the hole. A pipe with a valve on top ran across the bottom. This pipe leads to school, right? Someone was... What exactly? She scratched her head. Doing work on it? Ben stood. Come on, we should be in class. Bree ran her fingers inside the hole. What's all this white stuff? Something doesn't seem right here. Yet her brother pulled her away. Throughout the day, every time Bree thought about the hole, a feeling of dread... So strong filled her mind that she couldn't even hold her pencil. Mom, I'm going to the park. Ben swung his leg over his bike, which was loaded down with a baseball glove, a bat, and a sack full of fresh food from the garden. Wow, his mom said. What are you doing with all that spinach? He shrugged. Making a salad? I'm so proud of you. Have fun. A few minutes later, Ben parked his bike next to a baseball field and heard the sweetest sound in the world, the crack of a baseball bat. Lonnie Butternut and his baseball team were playing some other kids from school. Ben sat in the bleachers and waited for his chance to prove himself. He daydreamed about blasting a home run a hundred miles away or stealing the bases at the speed of light. That chance came in the next inning when a foul ball landed behind him. Ben took a deep breath. Here goes. Ben ate some spinach leaves and grabbed the ball. Both teams waited for him to throw it back over the fence. Ben hoped to throw it way over the fence, but his hands grew warm, and suddenly the baseball burst into flames. In a panic, he threw the ball of fire back. Instead of flying miles away like he'd hoped, the ball landed in the dugout and caught the team's bags on fire. Ben squirted water on the fire, but the water bottle melted in his hands. Every bag, bat, and ball turned into a pile of smoking ashes. What's wrong with you, new kid? Lonnie said. I'm sorry, Ben stepped away from all their angry eyes. I just wanted to play baseball. He turned and ran and didn't look back. He didn't want them to see his tears. Chapter 10. Ben sat on the front porch with his head in his hands. What's wrong, Bree said. I want to go back home, he said our real home. I can't play baseball here, and now the kids hate me. I don't hate you, she said. Ben chuckled, a sound without joy. Thanks. Help me solve this mystery, and then everyone will love you. What mystery? Why all the kids have cavities? Ben shook his head like he hadn't heard her. I just need the right superpower. Then they'll like me. I don't think that's how you make friends, Bree said. She pointed at a group of fourth grade girls walking down the sidewalk. But If you want to try it, now's your chance to impress them. Ben smiled. All right, let's do this. He ran inside to the fridge, grabbed a slice of watermelon, and took a huge bite. It was so delicious. He almost forgot why he was eating it in the first place. Ben ran back out front and waved. Ciao! The girls cocked their heads, puzzled. 
What? He tried again to say hi, but said, Bonjour. They laughed. What is that, French? Speak English, weirdo. Ben's eyes grew wide with embarrassment. He was trying to speak English, but every word that came out was a strange and unknown language. Konnichiwa? Guten Tag? The girls rolled their eyes and walked away. Ben sat on the curb. Bree joined him. It didn't work, Ben said. We're never going to make friends. Mom always says we just need to be ourselves. Ben shook his head. That's not good enough. Besides, we may have a bigger problem. Bree looked at him. What? My teeth hurt. Bree closed her eyes. Oh no, not you too! Chapter 11 I'll be back soon, Mom! Bree yelled and jumped on her bike. She planned to ride around town looking for people in trouble. Ben wanted to make friends and play baseball with his newfound superpowers. She just wanted to save the world. Bree parked her bike downtown and sat on a bench and waited. And waited. And waited. She didn't realize saving the world was so boring. Cars drove by and people shopped. When was someone going to be in trouble? A gray-haired lady stood by the intersection. Bree jumped up. She needs help crossing the street, she thought. Bree popped raspberries in her mouth. The older woman waited for the light to change. Bree's stomach danced with butterflies. Maybe I'll be strong. Maybe I'll be fast, she thought. Nothing happened. What was wrong? Then Bree looked up. A single cloud hovered above the woman, and a second later it started raining just on her. The woman scurried across the street, but the tiny rain cloud followed her. Bree swiped a shaking hand over her eyes. I can control the rain? That poor woman. Bree just wanted to help her, and now she was soaking wet. A large shadow suddenly loomed over Bree. What are you doing? Mrs. Canola said and glared at Bree. It was an accident, Bree said. Blocking the sidewalk so people shopping can't get by is an accident? Oh, Bree stepped out of the way. Sorry. Bree watched her walk away. Why does she have to be so mean? Suddenly, the little cloud moved over Mrs. Canola and dumped rain on her. Mrs. Canola yelped like a puppy whose paw has been stepped on and ran. But no matter which way she turned, the little cloud stayed with her. Let me get an umbrella for you, Dr. Lardlow said. He stood in front of a long line of people, mostly kids from school and their parents. A sign on a large truck behind him read, Dr. Lardlow, dentist. Mrs. Canola wiped rainwater out of her eyes. Thank you, doctor. He turned to the crowd. Sorry about the long wait, folks. Don't worry. We'll get those cavities taken care of in my mobile dentist's office. He patted the side of the truck, which reminded Bree of a big moving van. I call it my mobile tooth treatment truck. Dr. Lardlow opened the driver's door, grabbed an umbrella, and handed it to Mrs. Canola. Something inside the truck caught Bree's eye, but he shut the door too quickly for her to get a good look. Probably just more toothbrushes, she thought. Bree sat on the curb and felt guilt wash over her. I need to use my powers for good. A moment later, one of her classmates pointed to the roof of a furniture store. My ball! Bree smiled. Perfect. She produced a piece of her mother's roasted sweet potato. If I can jump high like last time, I can get his ball back. The sweet taste filled her mouth. Mmm. Bree jumped. Nothing happened. She jumped again. Nothing. Her classmates in line noticed and giggled. Bree gritted her teeth. Why wasn't it? Suddenly, her arms stretched across the street. She stared in disbelief. Her arms were 30 feet long. Before Bree knew what was happening, her hands wrapped around a boy from class. Then, just as quickly as they shot out, her arms shrank back to their normal size and pulled the boy across the street into a tight hug. He squealed. The other kids laughed, and Bree's cheeks blazed fire engine red with embarrassment. She ran away, but it took a long time before she couldn't hear their laughter ringing in her ears. Chapter 12. What's wrong with you guys tonight? Neither Ben nor Bree answered their mother. They stared at their baked potatoes and dreaded going back to school. What horrible thing would happen tomorrow to make everyone laugh at them? 
Eat some more veggies and you'll feel better, their mom said. That's the problem, Ben said, the food from our garden. What are you talking about? Their mom's lip quivered. Your cooking is great, mom, he said, but how could he tell her? She wouldn't believe him anyway. Do you think it's strange that so much food grows back there? Bree speared a chunk of cantaloupe with her fork. Let's show her. Their mother's eyes grew wide. Show me what? Ben cut off a piece of potato. Our weird superpowers. If we burn the house down, well, we're sorry. Their mom stood and knocked her chair over. You two are really scaring me now. But Ben and Bree chewed their food silently. No one breathed. The only sound was a dripping kitchen faucet. Bree cocked her head to the side and sniffed. Someone's grilling burgers outside. Next door, Ben said. Bree looked at her brother. No, not next door. She sniffed again. Five blocks away, their mom crossed her arms. I don't like being tricked. Cool, Ben said. Super smelling power. What else do you smell? She sniffed again. An alarm crossed her face. A fire. Maybe a mile from here. Bree looked across the table. Mom, call 911. This is not funny, she said. 911 times 922 equals 839,942, Ben said. What is going on, their mom said. Give me some more numbers, Ben said. Numbers? Bree thought for a moment. Okay, 5,412 times 9,856. In less than a second, Ben said, 53,340,672. A human calculator, Bree said. See, mom? But their mother couldn't see anything. She had her face in her hands. Go to your rooms. But now, Ben and Bree sat in their rooms alone the rest of the night. Now, no one believed them, not even their own mother. Chapter 13. At school the next day, Mrs. Canola was substituting in Ben's class. She almost cried when she took attendance. Eleven kids are absent for dentist appointments? At this rate, we'll have to cancel school soon. Ben smiled. No school? Something funny? Lonnie Butternut said. Ben's stomach dropped. No. His entire class glared at him, including Mrs. Canola. Cavities are serious, Bill, Mrs. Canola said. My name's Ben, and I know. I'm sorry. Do you know something about what's going on, Boris? No, his heart thumped. And my name's Ben. Without thinking, he jammed a sweet pepper slice into his mouth. Maybe I can fly away or disappear or turn back time and do this day over instead. He burped, and a golf ball came out of his mouth. Then another, and another. I'm burping golf balls? That's not a superpower, he thought. Ooh, gross, the girls said together after the fourth slobber-covered ball bounced across their desks. Ben put his head down on his desk. It was going to be a long day. Bree wasn't having much luck either. She ate a slice of tomato before talking to Nina Bacon Bits and some other girls at lunch. Hi, can I sit with you? Bree said. The girls covered their ears. What's wrong with your voice? What do you mean? Bree said. Her voice did sound odd, like a whistle. Everyone covered their ears again. A boy's glasses cracked, followed by a window. Whoops, she thought. Her voice was so high-pitched, it could shatter glass. Go away, Nina said. So... Bree sat down with her brother. He looked as sad as she felt. Bad day, huh? Ben didn't even look up. We've got all these cool powers, but nobody likes us. Bree looked around the cafeteria at all the other kids with their friends. I thought it would be easier than this. She felt tears stinging her eyes. Ben balled a napkin up and threw it in the trash. If only I could play baseball. I would try eating a different fruit tomorrow, but... He sighed. I'd probably blow up the baseball field. Suddenly, cheers rang out across the cafeteria. Dr. Lardlow waved and tossed toothbrushes to the children. An idea flashed in Bree's head. We need to help Dr. Lardlow solve the mystery of the cavities. We all love him because he's helping us. If we help him, they'll love us? Ben frowned. Wait, you think someone is giving these kids cavities? How? I don't know, but it's too much of a coincidence. 
Maybe it's their food, Ben said. Let's look for clues. Everyone was trying to catch toothbrushes, so no one noticed them looking at lunches. This food looks pretty healthy, Ben said. Let's look in the trash. What? Ben said. Everyone already thinks we're freaks. Do you want to make it worse? But she was already digging through the trash can. Bree, stop it. Then a shadow fell over them. What are you two doing? It was Mrs. Canola. Chapter 14. Bree came out of the trash can with lettuce in her hair. Oh, hi, Mrs. Canola. We're trying to cause trouble, Mrs. Canola said, like always. Let's go. As Ben shuffled behind her to the office, he noticed something odd. Mud coated Mrs. Canola's shoes. Ben immediately thought of the hole they had found in the woods. Had she been the one digging behind the school? Why? After spending the afternoon in the principal's office, Ben and Bree walked into the empty hallway. I'm going to look for more clues, Bree said. Ben sighed. Bree, stop. She whirled on him. Why won't you help me? I just want to be normal, have a few friends, play baseball. Me too, she said. But we have this gift. Shouldn't we use it to help people instead of just trying to be popular? Ben looked at the school's front door where he could escape this world of responsibility and cavities and Mrs. Canola. Then he looked at his little sister, pleading with her eyes. He let out a long breath. <sighs> okay, I think I've got a clue. He told her about the mud on Mrs. Canola's shoes. She pursed her lips. Why would she dig a hole to that pipe? I wish we had some food from the garden to help us be smarter or something. Ben thought for a moment. What goes through a pipe? Water! She grabbed his hand. Come on! They ran to the closest water fountain. Take a drink. Ben took a step back. Why? What if she poisoned it? We're tasting it for clues. She shoved him aside. I'll do it then. Bree pushed the button and took several sips, smacking her lips. It tastes weird. Ben took a long sip. He couldn't place it, but the water definitely tasted different from their water at home. She's done something to the water. But what? A tingle crawled up Ben's neck. It felt like someone was watching them. He glanced down the hall and realized someone was watching them. Mrs. Canola. Chapter 15. Run, Ben said. They flew out the front doors and didn't stop until they were home. What do we do now, Bree said. She shivered despite the warm air. She knows we know. We need to tell somebody. What are we going to tell them? Mrs. Canola has muddy shoes and made the school's water taste weird. Bree paced around the living room. We've got to do something before school tomorrow. Like what? Bree gulped. I don't know. Mom, do I have to go to school? Bree asked the next morning at the breakfast table. She couldn't stop shaking. Why don't you want to go? I'm scared. I know a new school is hard, but I also know you'll be brave. She wrapped her arms around Bree and squeezed. You want some sugar for your oatmeal? Bree jumped out of her chair like it was red hot. That's it! Sugar! Ben snapped his fingers. That's what was sprinkled all around the hole. It looked like snow, but it was sugar. What are you two talking about, their mom said. And that's why the water tasted funny, Bree said. She's putting sugar in the school's water supply and giving kids cavities. Bree hugged her brother and then jumped back when she realized she was hugging her brother. But why would she do that, Ben said. Bree put her hands on her hips. We're going to find out. Their mom threw up her hands. Will someone tell me what is going on? Sugar, cavities, and evil? Substitute, Ben said. It's up to us to stop her. Bree looked at her mom. Will you help us? She looked back and forth between Bree and Ben as if they were strangers. How? They smiled. We need fruits and vegetables. Lots of them. Chapter 16. The next morning, Ben and Bree walked into the cafeteria, bags bulging with lettuce and leeks, cantaloupe and cherries. Kids were eating breakfast, or at least trying to, with all their painful cavities. Before they could find the principal, Mrs. Canola found them. Why were you two sneaking around yesterday? 
Mrs. Canola's eyes glowed like a hawk just before it swoops down on its prey. Bree looked at her brother. Her heart pounded in her chest. Could they really stop her? Ben nodded with encouragement. Fellow students, Bree yelled. Every kid stopped eating. This substitute teacher is the one giving you cavities. Yelling in school and false accusations, Mrs. Canola said. That's a trip to the principal's office. Bree looked at the other kids. We're here to save you. She popped a few grapes in her mouth. Please give me a good superpower this time. Bree pointed to Mrs. Canola. She is putting sugar. Laughter rippled through the cafeteria. Students weren't looking at Bree. They were looking behind her. Bree pointed at Mrs. Canola again. Children clapped and cheered this time. Quit playing around, Ben said to her. Bree turned. The rising sun cast their shadows on the wall. The shadow of Bree's hand on the wall wasn't just fingers and a thumb. It was a beautiful shadow horse jumping and running, dancing every time she moved her hand. Make a giraffe, a little girl yelled. Bree moved her hand again, and the shadow on the wall turned into a gorgeous shadow giraffe with an impossibly long neck. The entire cafeteria burst into applause. Hand shadow puppets, Ben said to her. How's that going to help us? This is so fun, Bree said. She turned her hand shadows into two lions that jumped on Ben's shadow. That's enough, Mrs. Canola said. Principal's office, now. We're just getting started, Ben said, and ate a piece of roasted cauliflower. Suddenly, his chest felt huge. When he let his breath out, a hundred-mile-an-hour wind knocked trays and milk cartons to the floor. Mrs. Canola's hair twisted around on her head like she was in a hurricane. What? Ben sucked in more air and let it out again, and this time kids were thrown from their seats. Papers swirled through the air. Posters flew from the walls. Kids screamed, Stop, Ben! Bree said. Stop breathing, he said. Yes! Ben clamped his hands over his mouth, but it was too late. Kids poured outside to get away from his hurricane breath. The principal rushed in the room. What is going on? Bree pointed at Mrs. Canola. Mrs. Canola pointed at Ben. Ben pointed outside at Dr. Lardlow? Chapter 17. Outside, the children ran to Dr. Lardlow as he got out of his dentist's office, the mobile tooth treatment truck. Why are you pointing to him? Bree asked her brother. Dr. Lardlow's on our side. Then she looked outside. Wait, Dr. Lardlow got another truck? This truck was even fancier and shinier and bigger than the one she'd seen parked downtown. Bree's mind jumped back to that day when he'd opened the door to retrieve an umbrella for Mrs. Canola. She pictured what she'd barely seen inside. Why didn't I think of it before, she thought. The new truck, the long lines of customers, all his visits to the school. It was Dr. Lardlow, she said, not wanting to believe it. After all, he was so nice. I'll bet he's not even a real dentist, Ben grinned at her, an apple in each hand. Ready? What do you two think you're doing, Mrs. Canola said. S-O-S, Bree said, and palmed a handful of spinach. Saving our school. They ran to the parking lot and the mob of children surrounding the dentist. We need to get in his truck. I'm on it, Ben said, and took two big bites of apple. A moment later, his arms bulged inside his sleeves until he looked like the world's strongest man. Perfect, Bree said. Just yank the door open. What's going on, children? Dr. Larlow asked, alarmed at the sight of Ben's giant arms. It's just our local freaks, doctor, a little girl said. They're harmless. Ben roared and swung his gigantic arms against the dentist's truck. Instead of a crash of metal, the only sound was a soft whump, like two pillows falling off of a bed. Ben touched his arms. They were fluffy. Pillow arms, he muttered. You've got to be kidding me. See, the little girl said to Dr. Lardlow, I told you they were harmless. My turn, Bree said, and swallowed some spinach. The next second, she felt a tap on her shoulder and turned around to face herself. Another tap. Bree whirled around and saw another Bree identical to the first. It was like looking into a funhouse mirror. Everywhere Bree looked, she saw herself. 
Ben pushed through the crowd and knocked four Bree's out of the way with his pillow arms. Bree, which one of you is the real you? Here, Bree said. She looked at all the copies of herself. Well, stop staring at me and get him. Eight Bree's grabbed Dr. Lardlow. He held up his hands in surrender and laughed. Ha <laughs> ha, some good magic tricks, kids. Mrs. Canola rushed up and said, I'm sorry about this, doctor. She grabbed Ben, but wasn't sure which Bree was which, so she snatched the closest one. These children were just going to the principal's office. Bree turned to her classmates and pointed to Dr. Lardlow. He's the one that's been giving you cavities so he can make more money. Dr. Lardlow smiled. How would I do that? With the sugar in your truck, Bree said. He faced the crowd. Would I ever do that to you precious children? No, the kids yelled and glared at Ben and Bree. Ben's arms shrank to normal size again and all the copies of Bree disappeared. Let's go, Mrs. Canola said. Her grip on their arms was iron. There was no escape. Chapter 18. We failed. Ben hung his head in despair as they were escorted across the parking lot. We couldn't stop Dr. Lardlow. Then he felt a flicker of hope. A piece of food was stuck in his teeth from dinner the night before. An onion or maybe broccoli. If Ben could work the vegetable loose and swallow it, he might get a superpower. They were almost inside the school. Hurry! He pushed against his teeth with his tongue. The piece of food finally popped loose. Just as Mrs. Canola opened the door, the deafening sound of flapping wings filled the air. Ben looked up. Thousands, maybe millions of birds perched all over the school and the trees and the playground equipment. They watched him with their beady eyes as if awaiting his command. Ben blinked in astonishment. Could it be possible? Can I really control all these birds? He smiled and whispered a single word, fly. Birds of all colors and sizes took to the air. People ran in every direction. Ben spotted Dr. Lardlow sprinting for his truck, key in hand. Stop him, Ben said. A hawk swooped down and snatched Dr. Lardlow's truck key in its beak. Ben pumped his fist, yes, but the hawk flew away. Wait, come back, we need that key to get in this truck. Now all the birds were flying away, no longer listening to him. Ben's superpower? was gone. I've got it, Bree said and ate a slice of kiwi. Instead of jumping high or flying so she could get the key back, flames shot out of her fingertips. The hawk screeched and dropped the key. Whoops, Bree said as she accidentally set the playground on fire. Sorry. Ben snatched the key, ran to the truck, and slid it in the lock. Stop, Dr. Lardlow said. Ben smiled. Your cavity crime spree is over, Dr. He turned the key and pulled the door open. Inside were 10 bags of sugar. Chapter 19. Mrs. Canola lifted a hand to her mouth in shock. Dr. Lardlow, you've been giving these children cavities with this sugar to make more money? She narrowed her eyes. It was you all along. Ben and Bree high-fived. We did it! They couldn't stop smiling. Someone wasn't smiling, though. You meddling kids, Dr. Lardlow said. You'll pay for this. He reached into his truck and pulled out a toothbrush. Ben laughed. You gonna show us how to brush our teeth? Look out, Bree said, but it was too late. The red light of a laser pointer shot out of the toothbrush, and Ben took a direct hit to his eyes. Ouch! Bree gritted her teeth and took a bite of watermelon. Nobody hurts my brother and gets away with it. It was Dr. Lardlow's turn to laugh. You're gonna spit watermelon seeds at me? He reached into his pocket. Good thing I always carry an extra set of keys. He jumped in his truck and roared across the parking lot. Don't let him get away, Ben said. Bree's teeth suddenly seemed too big for her mouth and her jaw felt strong. It almost feels like I can bite through anything, she thought. He's not out of the parking lot yet. Bree ran to a telephone pole, opened her mouth wide, and bit through the wood in one chomp. Like a felled tree, the telephone pole crashed to the ground and blocked the exit. Dr. Lardlow squealed to a stop, trapped. Good job, sis, Ben said, but you look like a beaver with those big teeth. 
She smiled wide, showing them off. Thanks. Ben ate a kale leaf and pointed. Looks like we're not done yet. Dr. Lardlow climbed out of his truck with a different toothbrush. You'll never stop me! He blew into one end of the toothbrush, and a small dart shot out. Ben and Bree ducked, and the dart whistled overhead, hitting Mrs. Canola in the arm. The next instant, she was snoring. Ben's eyes went wide. His toothbrush is a blow dart gun with tranquilizer darts? And he's reloading, Bree said and ate a kale leaf. But instead of getting armor skin or something useful, her fingers turned into brightly colored pieces of chalk. A dart whistled overhead and stuck in a nearby apple tree. Watch out, Ben said, then turned to look at his sister. What are you doing? Bree was drawing on the concrete with her new chalk fingers. These are really cool. Bree, try to stay focused. We are saving the school after all. Dr. Lardlow snatched another toothbrush from his trunk, pushed a button, and threw the toothbrush into the crowd. Immediately, smoke filled the air. A toothbrush smoke grenade, Ben said. Children coughed and scattered in all directions. Someone bumped into Bree, and she dropped the backpack full of their super-powered fruits and vegetables. When the smoke cleared, Dr. Lardlow was gone. Chapter 20. Everyone stood up, dazed. The place looked like a war zone. Ben couldn't believe Dr. Lardlow had gotten away after all. Even with their incredible superpowers, they'd been unable to stop him. Wait! Lonnie Butternut yelled. There he is! Dr. Lardlow hopped the playground fence and ran for the woods. Lonnie turned back to Ben. Do something! Everyone looked at Ben and Bree, even Mrs. Canola, still half asleep on the ground. Where's our bag of veggies? Ben asked. I don't know, Bree said. How can we stop him without our superpowers, Ben said. With every passing second, Dr. Lardlow got farther and farther away. Bree snapped her fingers. Apples! She pointed to the apple tree. But they're not our special apples. They won't work. Bree grinned. Those apples aren't for eating. They're for throwing. She climbed the tree impossibly fast and tossed Ben a perfect red apple, just the size of a baseball. Ben hefted that apple and eyed his target. It was such a long throw, an impossible throw, but he had to try, superpowers or not. He cocked his arm back and threw the apple as hard as he could. It sailed over the parking lot and the playground and the fence. The entire school watched, holding their breath. The apple hit Dr. Lardlow square in the head. He dropped to the ground, and a moment later, the police arrived to arrest him. It started slowly. The first grade girl who'd called them freaks clapped her hands. Then another student clapped, followed by another. Eventually, even Lonnie Butternut and Nina Baconbits joined in. You saved the whole school, Bree said to Ben. She had to shout over all the cheering. No, you did, Ben said. She put her arm around her brother. We did. Chapter 21. I packed both of your lunches with lots of goodies, their mom said the next morning. That garden just keeps growing. Amazing, right? Ben sneaked a smile at his sister. Amazing. Have a wonderful day at school, you two. Oh, I think we will, Bree said. She hugged them tight. I'm so proud of both of you. Walking to school, Ben peeled an orange and popped it in his mouth. A moment later, he looked sideways at a house and said, Cool. What? Bree said. X-ray vision. I can see through walls. Be careful, Bree said. Why? He looked at another house. Ew, gross. That guy was in his underwear. Bree laughed. (laughs) Told you. She ate a strawberry and suddenly zoomed out of sight, her legs moving so fast they became a blur. Bree? Ben turned his head in all directions, but she was nowhere in sight. A moment later, she reappeared, sweaty and out of breath. Where'd you go? Ben said. Bree's eyes were as wide as truck tires. I just saw the Statue of Liberty. What? It's like a thousand miles away. I know. I could run so fast. Ben shook his head in amazement. Wow. They walked into their school, but someone stopped them immediately. It was Mrs. Canola. Chapter 22. 
arms crossed, with a scowl on her face, Mrs. Canola looked down her nose at them. Yesterday, you two broke windows, burned down the playground, destroyed a telephone pole, disrupted classes, and frightened a hundred children. Bree dropped her eyes to the floor. Sorry, Mrs. Canola, we were just trying to save our kids, Mrs. Canola said, which you did. And then, unbelievably, miraculously, Mrs. Canola smiled. On behalf of our school, thank you. But please, in the future, no fire or birds or crazy hand shadow puppets in the building. Yes, Mrs. Canola, Ben said. Yes, Mrs. Canola, Bree said. After she walked away, Bree turned to her brother. Do you think we really need those superpowers? You heard her, Ben said. Those powers helped us save the school. But... It was your regular, non-superpowered apple throw that stopped Dr. Lardlow, remember? Ben thought for a moment. And it was your regular, non-superpowered climb into that tree that got me that apple. He smiled. Maybe we're super already. Maybe we can still use them on special occasions. Bree opened her lunchbox. Inside were blueberries and pears and Brussels sprouts from their garden. Ben grinned. Maybe an animal will escape from the zoo, and they'll need our help. Bree grinned back. You never know. Kids surrounded them. The little ones hugged their legs, and the older ones high-fived them. Lonnie Butternut stepped up to Ben. You're like an accident waiting to happen. But that was quite a throw to knock out that crazy fake of a dentist. We could use someone like you on our baseball team. Will you eat lunch with us today? A dozen girls asked Bree. By the time they made it to class, Ben and Bree were exhausted, but it was a good exhaustion. They had friends. Bree made her voice deep, imitating Lonnie Butternut, and said, You're like an accident waiting to happen. Ben laughed. The accidental superheroes. I like the sound of that. The end.